time I'd like to introduce uh, Ruby O'Neill, president of Chapter 323, Wooden of the World. Ruby. Go ahead. Thank you, Jack. Can you hear me now? Good evening. It is my pleasure to welcome each of you on behalf of Woodman of the World, Chapter 323, to this dedication ceremony. This has been a dream and now a reality for Woodman Jack Koontz and many others who have given their time to make this event possible. We are pleased to welcome family members of the fallen officers and members of the honored departments. We will honor our county's fallen officers as well as remember the courageous men and women who safeguard our communities throughout the year and put their lives on the line for our safety. On this 13th anniversary of 9-11, let us fulfill our promise never to forget that tragic day. Join me now in prayer led by Judge Jimmy Myers. Before I lead us in prayer, I think back to the day in which I had the opportunity to do the invocation when we dedicated our wall of remembrance for those who had lost their lives in service of our nation. And it's special for me because Tonight we honor the, those who have fallen in the line of duty protecting the citizens of Davie County. And I remember back to that night in the 70s when I was at home on the Redland Road and I heard the sirens that called our law enforcement personnel to respond to the deaths of their colleagues. Wayne Gaither on the north end of the road and Jack Reniger on the south end of the road. I was right there when all of that happened. And on 9-11, 13 years ago, I was flying uh, on active duty with the United States Marine Corps to serve my country. And I was in the air when 9-11 uh, plane crashes took place. The flight I was on crossed the uh, path, the flight path of the plane that hit the Pentagon. It's been my privilege to be able to have visited Ground Zero in New York City, and we have the fire truck from New York City with us tonight, and also to visit the uh, Ground Zero at the Pentagon and to be at the Memorial Chapel that is located there at the Pentagon for those fallen. And it is a privilege for me tonight, the grandson of a Davie County Deputy Sheriff, to be able to have the invocation. Join me now as we invoke God's presence to be with us this evening. Let us pray. Oh Lord God, look down upon us, visit us with your spirit, as we remember tonight, and as we give thanks for the lives of these men that are on this new monument, and for their families, we lift up to you all who serve in our county to protect us, our law enforcement officers, our firemen, those who are in the military, <coughs> Lord, be with each of them, and it's our prayer, just like I prayed that there would never be any more names placed on this wall that does not deserve to be there. 
many years ago in the 80s. May we never have to add any names to this wall of law enforcement and firefighters who have lost their lives in service to the people of Davie County. And Lord, we ask now that you would touch our hearts in a special way this night as we give thanks to God for them and their families and the families of all who serve in positions that could cost them their lives in the protection of those of us here in Davie County. We ask this in the special name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, would you please rise for the presentation of the colors by the JROTC unit of our beloved Davie High School. We'd like to thank the uh, junior ROTC from high school for uh, sending the colors. Uh, Caleb and uh, Sarah Davis for singing the national anthem. 
and the Pledge of Allegiance for the Scouts. This time I would like to introduce our special guest we have here tonight. Uh, we have uh, State Senator Andrew Brock, I saw in the audience. We have Bob Wilson, State Manager for Woodman of the World. Allie Gossett, West North Carolina Community Outreach Manager, Woodman of the World. Uh, Jeff Perdue, Area Manager, Woodman of the World. Uh, Dr. Jim Shaver, uh, one of our National Board of Directors. Uh, and we have a captain here from Forsyth County and Sheriff's Department. I didn't uh, see him, but he was to be here. Uh, we appreciate all of you being here. At this time, I would like to uh, recognize the uh, department heads uh, that we have uh, listed on the memorial. Their names are not on it, but their departments are on it. Uh, Chiefs Advance, Rodney Miller, Coolman, Brian Williams, Canasser Doolin, Michael Allen, County Line, Brian Coons, Assistant Chief of Center, Roy Hurt, Farmington, Todd Naylor, Fork, Nathan Walker, Jerusalem, Wayne Williams, Moxville, Frank Carter, Sheffield Callahan, David Beck, Smith Grove, Don Howard, William R. Davey, Jason Keaton, Clemens, Jerry Brooks, Courtney, Barry Willard, Lone Hickory, Robbie Williams, Scotch Irish, Trey Hossel, Fire Marshal Jerry Myers, Rescue Squad Andy Lipscomb, Sheriff Andy Stokes, Moxville Police Chief Todd Penley, Coolmy Police Chief Bobby West, North Carolina State Highway Patrol Sergeant Philip Dixon, EMS Andy Lipscomb, Emergency Communications Ronnie Ross. And at this time, I would like all of the EM, all of the emergency services people, if you would just hold up your hand. This time we'll have the uh, September 11th Memorial with Jerry Myers, the County Farm Marshal. Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. September 11, 2001, 343 firefighters, 8 EMS personnel, 60 law enforcement personnel made the ultimate sacrifice in the performance of their duties. Those personnel lost their lives attempting to help their fellow man without hesitation for their safety. We should never forget the sacrifices that were made that day. We should also never forget the countless family who has lost loved ones that day and is still affected by that day even today. There are still people dealing with health related issues associated with the terror attacks. The Bible tells us not to fear tells us this 365 times, once for each day. The personnel that responded to the Twin Towers that day showed no fear as they ascended the towers to make those rescues on that ill-fated day. This piece of equipment that you have, have behind you is a rescue truck from the city of New York. We can only speculate that Lieutenant Dow, the officer of the day, who is riding the officer's seat, was only thinking of the fires that needed to be suppressed and the rescues that needed to be performed. He was probably developing an action plan of what needed to be performed, what needed to be done with him and his crew. Never considering the, in just a very short time, the unimaginable would happen. We come today to pay tribute to the emergency service personnel that respond to the World Trade Center, no matter what type of uniform they wore on that fateful day and the rescue efforts that followed. Two groups that I would be delegating my duties if I did not mention would be the military and civilian personnel who lost their lives at the Pentagon and the crew of passengers of Flight 93 whose brave attempt to fight back against the hijackers in an attempt to retake the aircraft.
their actions we all know on that day saved countless lives. We now know that that aircraft was on the way to Washington to take more lives. One of those brave crew members lived not too far from here in Greensboro. Sandra Bradshaw was a flight attendant on Flight 93 that day. May we never forget the sacrifices that were made by so many on that day, September 11, 2001. This memorial has been placed in honor of those who have dedicated their lives to protect and serve our community and to those who have fallen in the line of duty. It is dedicated to all of you who put, on, put your lives on the line every time you put on a uniform and respond to a call. Whatever kind it may be, we want to thank you for being willing to respond any time, day or night, to drop what you're doing and to go help others in need. Some of you are paid and many of you are volunteers. Working together, we are making Davy County a much better place to live and work. We as Woodman are proud of each and every one of you and for your commitment and your service. On behalf of the citizens of Davy County, I want to thank you. I want to say a special thank you to the members of Chapter 323, Woodman of the World, for funding this project and designing this memorial. I want to thank Julian Campbell for making the project affordable, to Energy United for sending a crew to help place this monument in the location that it is, and to Marie Roth for all the research that she has done on all the officers killed in the line of duty, and for the book that she is writing about the ones who have fallen in the line of duty, and in this ceremony also. I want to thank the county commissioners for allowing us to place this memorial in this place, in this location, and I want to thank you for being here. At this time, Woodman members Brian Kings and Frankie O'Neill would unveil the memorial. time we will have the biographies uh, starting with William David Wood about Marie Rowe. The first recorded law enforcement desk in David County was Will Wood of Advance in 1901. William David Wood was born on August the 12th, 1877. In 1900, he married Virginia Cruz. They had a daughter, Alice. When Alice was six months old, Will was a constable in advance. On the 8th of June in 1901, Will and his father were in Mr. Jones' store in advance. Lewis, nicknamed Luke Burton, was drunk and disorderly. Will asked him to leave the store, whereupon he went into the street and started firing his gun. Will went out and asked him to stop shooting, but instead Luke shot Will fatally. One newspaper article reported that Will died three hours later. Luke escaped, but was captured four weeks later in Ivanhoe, Virginia, which is about 90 miles north of here. Luke was returned to Davie and in October sentenced to 15 years in Raleigh Prison. <laughs> The judge later reduced the sentence to 12 years. Will's daughter, Alice, married Archie Edwards Potts, and they had nine children. Will died when he was only 23 in the line of duty, attempting to create a safe environment for the residents of Advance. It was a sad time for the family and the area. Are there any members of uh, his family here tonight?
The next one killed in the line of duty was James Gaither Campbell. He was born March 27, 1892. He worked as a traveling salesman for R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company and also as a deputy revenue officer. On Sunday morning, September the 2nd, 1917, he was attending services at the First Baptist Church in Marksville. Someone came in and told him that liquor was being passed around at the Sandy Springs Camp Meeting Grounds and uh, what is now Fred Lanier Road, and he would need to go check it out. He went out and did not find any at the camp meeting. He went out into the woods and found four men drinking and gambling. He saw that Jim Black had a, Jim Belk had a gun in his pocket and ordered him to put it on the ground. Mr. Belk took it out of his pocket and immediately started shooting. He to Campbell was shot four times. Deputy Campbell was taken to Long Sanatorium and Station. He died at 2 p.m. on September 4, 1917. Mr. Campbell was a well-known young man and his shooting and death caused a lot of excitement in Davie County. Mr. Belt surrendered to Iredale County officers at about the same time that uh, James Gaither Campbell died. Uh, Mr. Belt was taken to Statesville and later that night on to Charlotte because of the concerns for his safety. He was convicted and sentenced to 20 years of hard labor. James Gaither Campbell was buried at Oak Grove Methodist Church on Highway 158 North. Mr. Campbell was my mother's oldest brother. The Friday night of May 30th, 1975, was a night that will always be remembered by the residents of Davie County especially those in the law enforcement community. Deputy Sheriff Wayne Harold Gaither made a routine traffic stop on what he thought was a drunk driver and was shot repeatedly and killed. Wayne Gaither was born and raised in the Sheffield community of Davie County. He graduated from Davie County High School in 1964. After graduation, Wayne served in the U.S. Army and was a Vietnam veteran. Wayne began his law enforcement career in 1971 and has worked for both the Davie County Sheriff's Office and the Malkey Police Department. He was a member of the Davie County Law Enforcement Officers Association and the North Carolina Law Enforcement Officers Association, and he was a member of the New Union United Methodist Church, where he is now buried. <coughs> Wayne Gaither was a personal friend of mine and often visited in my home. Wayne was a very light-hearted, outgoing man who was known for his devotion and dedication. He always strived for excellence in law enforcement. Wayne Gaither loved his work. He gave his life depending, defending principles he believed in so firmly. As a result of Wayne's murder, a, a bolo was broadcast and the suspect's vehicle was spotted in Clement. A short time later, by Forsyth County officers R.L. Russ and Captain Jack C. Red Renegade, they pursued that vehicle back into Davie County to the intersection of Highway 158 and Redland Road, where a second shootout occurred, resulting in the death of Captain Renegade. After the second fatal shootout, the largest manhunt in Davie County history began with officers as far away as Wilmington, North Carolina, responding. It, it also resulted in the suspect, Maury Joe Campbell of Farmington, being declared an outlaw by Superior Court Judge Thomas C. And he was the last man in North Carolina, North Carolina history, to be so declared. During the first night of the manhunt, Maury Joe Campbell was confronted by retired Marksville Police Chief Bob Cook, who shot him, but the suspect again managed to escape. On the third day of the manhunt, the suspect was spotted hiding in a barn and was captured without a shot being fired. Today, as we dedicate Wayne Gaither's name on this monument, may it always say to us that we stand behind those who enforce the law. 
against those who break the law, and may it always give meaning to the law and what it stands for. May we always remember how Wayne lived, not how he died. Are there any members of uh, Wayne's family here? Okay, I know there's some, uh, of some family members for the Campbell. Would y'all want to stand up and let them know who you are? It's a pleasure to be here this evening, and uh, I'd like to have, in the remembrance of Jack Renninger, I happen to know him. I was working at the Sheriff's Department at that time. Uh, Red was a great, passionate person in the civic community. He uh, worked with the Boy Scouts. He worked with the uh, people in the church, uh, the, uh, the children. He uh, also, he was uh, with the Winston-Salem Police Department. Reserve unit. In 1971, he came to the Side County Sheriff's Office and, and uh, he uh, formed the Side County Sheriff's Department Reserve. Uh, he was the first captain, and the reserve all the way without any pay. And uh, the night this happened, it was his night to be off. But one of his officers, reserve officers. Needed to be off that night, and he volunteered to help uh, take his place. He was planning to go on a vacation with his family, his wife, and three kids, the next day. And uh, they were they were at this uh, store over on 158 when a car pulled into the, uh, the uh, parking lot. He got up from his position and warned him to move on and not to get out of the car. That's when he was fatally shot. Uh, he was with Deputy Betty Russ at that time, and um, it was there in the call from the main gate that got his eyes also. Sheriff sure, Andy, you want to come back? and windy late afternoon of January 22nd, the Davie County Sheriff's Office became involved in a combination of calls that any law enforcement agency wishes would never happen. A young man desperately trying to avoid arrest took hostages, vowed he would not be taken alive, and would kill any officer who tried to capture him, and who then took refuge inside a home in a rural part of the county. After a couple of hours of sporadic negotiations with the suspect, he agreed to release his hostages in exchange for some cigarettes. After several anxious moments, the door was opened. The hostages made their exit, and the suspect could be seen standing in the hallway about 10 to 15 feet away, and at that time apparently unarmed. In an instant, the decision was made in an effort to use less than lethal force to send Gorky the big black Russian shepherd, canine officer, and to subdue the suspect, a maneuver that Gorgie was an expert in accomplishing. Gorgie was followed into the house by his handler, Corporal Chris Fleming, Chief Deputy J.D. Hartman, Corporal Jeff Jones, Captain Steve Moxley, Deputy Jeremy Burchett, and myself. Once inside the house, Gorky was greeted with three quick blasts from a 12-gauge shotgun, which mortally wounded him and struck Corporal Fleming in the face. In an instant, Gorky and the officers began to exit the house because no one could tell where the gunfire was coming from. As Gorky and the officers exited out of the hallway, I fired down the hall in an effort to provide coverage for them and to keep them from being shot in the back. Thinking that everyone was out of the house except the bad guy, I backed out of the house onto the front porch when I immediately heard glass breaking. I instinctively turned and fired, thinking that the suspect 
was fixing to shoot me or one of the other officers in the front yard. It was not until much later in the night that I learned I had shot Chris in the shoulder as he crashed through the window to get out of the line of fire. The entire episode happened in seconds. Gorky charged. Three quick blasts from a shotgun. A hurried exit. More shots. Glass breaking. More shots. It was simply a blur. What happened next, though, was even the greater story. Fatally wounded, Borky limped out of the house and found Chris Fleming. The two wounded officers, Borky and Fleming, bled together as they lay on the ground outside the house. When I jumped out of the window, Borky found me and stayed with me until the ambulance arrived to take me to the hospital. Chris later recalled. Dogs have been called man's best friend. Borky was a friend to David Young. Just like any officer who wears a badge, Gorky was an important member of the Sheriff's Office and a critical weapon in the fight against crime. Police dogs are highly trained, skilled animals that charge to control without regard to their own safety. You don't realize that if something like this happens, how devoted and courageous these canine officers and their dogs are. And now gives me a, a little bit of leeway to, to thank the canine officers in Davie County. These men constantly remind me of a statement made by Admiral Chester Nimitz on February 23, 1945 at Iwo Jima after the Japanese were defeated at Midway Island when he stated, uncommon valor was a common virtue. So this afternoon I would like to thank every canine officer for the job you do, quite often when you know you are in harm's way. To Gorky, rest in peace, and to Corporal Chris Fleming, well done. In closing, I would like to thank the hundreds of people in this community also, all of whom I simply cannot mention, for your concern, for your love for the officers, and for your generosity. To Gorky, I would like to say thank you for uniting this community and for giving me a new goal in life, and that is to be as good a person as my dog thinks I am. <laughs> Had it not been for Gorky, we would be holding a service for an officer, not a canine. Job well done, Gorky. Job well done. This time we'll have uh, the uh, name of the In the fire service, there are many traditions throughout our history. The life of a firefighter has been closely associated with the ringing of a bell. As he began his hours of duty, it was the bell that started it off. Throughout the day and night, each alarm was sounded by the bell, which called to him to fight a fire or rescue a person, to place his life in jeopardy for the good of his fellow man. And when the fires were out, the rescues were accomplished, the alarm had come to an end, we today will ring the bell 13 times in honor of those who have made the ultimate sacrifice.
I'd like to thank C.J. Dwiggins and Brandon Kainz for taps. This time we'll have the uh, benediction and closing prayer of Mickey Carter. Thank you, Jack, and thank you for everybody being here. Let's all pray. God, we want to thank you for your blessings and guidance. Thank you for all the public and volunteers that serve Davie County when a need arises. And let us never forget those that paid the ultimate price for our safety and well-being. Again, in closing, we thank you for Wooden of the World and providing this monument in remembrance and in honor of all that serve. Amen.